Direct from the best damn sports bar on Martin Street in Penticton, this is Coach's Corner, presented by Underwriters Insurance. It's time for your weekly fill of V's conversation and BCHL news and notes with members of the V's organization, fans, and the local media. Now let's get to the hockey talk with head coach and GM of the V's, Fred Harbinson, and your host, Ryan Pinder. Welcome to Coach's Corner. We are at the Best Damn Sports Bar on Martin Street in Penticton. This is episode number 19, brought to you by Underwriters Insurance. As always, coming up on tonight's program, an early look at the first two games of the second round matchup with Salmon Arm Silverbacks. We'll turn our attention forward to Salmon Arm as well to see what changes with the series moving to the shoe swap. Also, a glance around the BCHL. At a three other playoff series in the second round, and finally we'll have questions from emailers and our media panel as well as our live audience. The head coach and GM of the Penticton V's is Fred Harmonson. Coach, two games down, how deep is the hole? Well, you know, obviously we're not happy to be down two games to nothing, but uh, I think anybody that have watched the two games uh, would say that, uh, you know, we probably deserve a little better faith than, that we're, than what we're in, but uh, you know, so I think, you know, there's not no point sitting here crying about, you know, where, you know, the situation we're in and just it boils down to that we need to go into, into Salmon Arm tomorrow night like we've done on a lot of Fridays and, and find a way to get a win. It's interesting. You've, uh, we all sort of saw this as a longer series. I don't think anyone saw it as a short series and I don't think anything changes, but are you more discouraged than maybe you would have been after a couple poorly played games? Because I thought your team played pretty well. Well, if you you know, it's about getting wins this time of year. That that's a start. So I mean, I'd be lying if I said that I'd rather have lost those two games and played well than, than maybe play poor and win. But but at the same time, now that we're in this situation, uh, it, it's critical. It, it's a it's a much different feel around our room. That if if we would have you know got our ears pinned back for two games and end up down 0-2 going into their building, you know there'd be some time to panic. But you know, considering how we're playing. You know, I, I just think that, you know, we have to stay the course and keep doing what we're doing. And, um, you know, common sense would say, and a lot of people thought what would have happened last night is we would have find a way to win. And, um, you know, if we win tomorrow night, now it's all of a sudden a 2-1 series um, with us probably playing three. If we win tomorrow night, probably chances are we've played another good game. And that means that we've played three good games in a row against them, 2-1. Now they've got a lot of pressure on them the next night. Uh, you've got, I think, some pretty solid performances out of your players, Salmon Arm, as well. Let's talk about the visitors for games one and two. I think uh, the conversation has to start and might end after Mike Hammond and Chris Moore. They've been sensational. Yeah, you know, Hammond's kind of a funny player because, he, ha- he, to be honest, he hasn't done a lot except put up big numbers. And, and that's that's a funny statement, but, you know, you, you don't all of a sudden you don't notice him, don't notice him, and, it's, and then, then, bang, he makes... You make a mistake with him. He reminds me a lot of you know a Denver Manderson or Bo Bennett, that kind of type of player. That you make a mistake against him, he's going to find a way to break you down and, and make you pay. And you got to give him a lot of credit. He's been real opportunistic that way. Their whole team has been. And um, he, you know he made uh, you know he had the three goals the first night with the empty netter, and and last night uh, you know he made the play to create that penalty shot situation. And um, you know he's. He, he's definitely a, a key contributor for him, and but no, no question about it. I mean, this series would be drastically different right now if they were getting uh, good goaltending, not uh, excellent goaltending that they're getting. Uh, does he do anything particularly well in terms of more, or is it just a matter of getting in front of pucks and having some pings beside you rather than those quiet hitting of the, the mesh instead of the post? Yeah, you know, it's he battles hard, like he competes real hard, and and so it's. You know, I think he, he's finding ways to kind of suck the pucks up, but he but a lot of times there was, you know, we, you know we watch video and said, geez, we hit him in the chest a lot, but it was a lot of his positioning. But at the same time, both nights there was a number of scrambles around him that that we were able to create, and somehow he was able to make second and third stops that, uh, you know, in most cases would be in and and could have easily been two, three goal wins. What do you do when a goaltender's hot? Is it as simple as putting someone in front of him and trying to take his eyes away, or are there other things you try to do? Well, we're going to run him tomorrow night, first shift. So. Uh, no, it's uh, no, it's kind of funny how many people have told me that, but I mean, obviously, we don't condone that behavior. And you know what? We just we got to keep doing what we're doing. I mean, we we uh, we we had a short thirty-minute practice today, and and. Uh, you know, it was all about scoring goals. We have guys that have scored goals all year, and, and uh, you know, I think uh, 
you know, we just got to keep our confidence up. Don't start pressing. Don't start trying to put pucks into, you know, little spots. Just get it on the net and and, and look for rebounds and be hungry around that net, which we are. And, and you know, it's it's funny. It's uh, sometimes things just aren't meant to happen the way you think it's going to happen. And, you know, when you have six pipes or whatever in two games, you know, Joey Lelege's shot goes off the crossbar and in instead of off the crossbar and out last night to make it 3-1 to one late in the second. The way we were playing, I don't think they come back on us, and unfortunately, that's just the way it's gone. But maybe the next uh, the next game, that one will go off the pipe and in. I've uh, particularly enjoyed the play of three of your players, who I think have, are playing their best hockey of the season. Uh, Troy Stetcher arguably has been your best defenseman at times in the postseason. Certainly, this series last night, late, he was exceptional. Uh, and then also, I really like Curtis Loic on the walls last night and in game one and then Logan Johnson always seems to be at his best in the playoffs. Maybe you could talk a little bit about each of them and where you, where you think they're at. Yeah, well, I think you hit on the head. I mean, uh, you know, Troy, the reason he's been effective is he can skate. He really can move up, you know, laterally. He can move up and down the ice very well, sees the ice well, um, you know, and that's one thing Sam and Arm does well is they they can beat you on the rush. They really, they're really quick to pucks and, uh, you know he can counter counter their game with his speed so you know that's why he's been effective the other two you know we talked about trying to be a tougher team this time of year and, and you, know, you know a more physical team and um, you know the two players you mentioned and Logan and, and, and Loy uh, Logan Johnson and Curtis Loy I mean both those guys have been physical made some big hits in the first two games and have created stuff around the net and uh, you know Logan got a beautiful goal last night Goal and an assist on the power play as part of that second period. Uh, for Loic, are you surprised it's come? This is his first playoffs, and uh, sometimes guys arrive in their first playoffs and th the, the, the lights are a little brighter and, and they, they panic, but he, he's been at his best. Yeah, I know. I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I can't really fault our guys. I thought our guys played real well, and that's probably why it's frustrating to the fans, frustrating to us as a as a staff and the players. And, and um, you know, we just, you know, you go home last night and you, and you reanalyze the game and you play it over, and, and it's funny as a coach a lot of times when you lose it's easy because you've usually not played well so then you say okay these are the adjustments we're going to make and these are the changes we're going to make but when you look at these two games you know i don't think we're fooling ourselves i think we played pretty darn well and and for whatever reason we're in the situation we're in and we're just going to have to find a way to don't worry about frustration we've got to be men about it put it aside we can't waste our energy on that and and uh, we got to you know bring our a game again tomorrow night We'll take a break, come back, talk about the scene switching to the shoe swap. Also, a look at the series that are moving to Victoria, Langley, and Westside, all tied up around the BCHL. This is Coach's Corner, segment two on the other side in a moment. Here's a look at the upcoming games for your Penticton V's. Home or away, you can catch all the V's games on Easy Rock AM 800 in Penticton or online at myeasyrock.com. Join us next Thursday at 5.30 at the Best Damn Sports Bar for the next edition of Coach's Corner, presented by Underwriters Insurance. Welcome back to Coach's Corner. Segment two, we are live from the Best Damn Sports Bar on Martin Street. It's all brought to you by Underwriters Insurance. Coach, the scene switches to the shoe swap Friday and Saturday. You've been tied or have led every game in Salmon Arm this season. Uh, I don't think this is a place you're afraid of playing, but certainly Salmon Arm's been good at home. Yeah, they're good at home, but I think the one, you know, the one difference in the situation that we're in, maybe compared to years past, is that our lineup isn't real top heavy. We're kind of, you know, all four of our lines play a lot. Uh, you know, we've got talent spread throughout each line. So, it, you know, a lot of times in the past, you go on the road and all of a sudden a team's going to really try to you know match maybe against you on your top one or two lines and and then puts them in a tough spot but you know i don't i don't think we're you know we're pretty much the same on the road and or at home and uh i think that ch changes uh, this situation drastically from maybe years past is it a different mentality as a player or a coach do you find sometimes your players try to do too much in front of a home crowd where they could focus on a game plan on the road or, or has this crew been pretty even both ways I think we've been pretty even both ways and, and you know it's funny you bring that up because that's one of the things I talked to our group about today is that uh, you know I I don't think they realize how much more pressure is probably on Sam and Arm because Sam and Arm knows going home in front of their home crowd that they better get that win and put us in a 3-0 hole otherwise this thing's going to be a, a major difference in the series and 
you know, especially the way we played. It would be one thing if they, you know, smacked us around a little bit for two games and came out of here with two wins. But knowing the way the two games went, and, and uh, I think there's a lot of pressure on them. They better put us in a hole tomorrow night. Uh, physicality. This is something we talk about a lot. You you like the makeup of this club because the way you can go out and throw yourself into other teams. Is that something that will show up later in the series in terms of dividends? Are you already seeing it, or is it a seven-game series and, and you grind and you grind and eventually it'll reap uh, dividends for you? Well, yeah, you know we need to get we need to execute our you know some of our plays around the net to give make this a long series. Otherwise, you won't have an opportunity to see it. But I think. The question is, is that you know if we can get this extended uh, in our league when you play the five, six, seven in consecutive days, if we can get it to that situation to the five, six, then I think that ship, you know, things shift into our favor. But you know, right now we're down two, and we, we need to make sure that we get it to that point. Have they done anything that do you particularly thought was was shrewd in terms of maybe uh, neutralizing some of your guys or, or special teams? What have you been impressed with by the way they've done? Because they're, they're up 2-0 despite the fact you have played well. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, and this is, I mean, the only thing I can really say is I'm really impressed with their goaltending, and I'm I'm impressed that they're, you know, they're finishing the few chances they get. I mean, if we played two games back to back in the regular season and give up 86 shots, I I think we'd have a pretty serious practice the next day. So, you know, but like you say, they, they're up two nothing. So I'm, you know, the more you got to tip your hat to more, and you got to tip their hat to, to their top players for making uh, when they get a chance, they're burying their chances. So, um, you know, sometimes that's all you all you need, and, it, and it, in, a, in a cruel cruel way, it kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the teams we've had here in the past. They, they're not very they're not overly physical, but they've got some dangerous guys and, and great goaltending that we've seen in the past here. And, and you know, it, it seems like we give up, make three mistakes in a game. Like first period last night, we gave up one great A and guess where it was? It was right in the back of the net. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, around the BCHL, also in the interior conference, Westside and Vernon tied. Uh, what do you see in that matchup? Is that something that goes the distance? Are you surprised Westside won in Vernon, which uh, has been a tough place to win the last three years? Well, Vernon hasn't had that, it hasn't been that tough place to to win in this year, uh, you know they've got a lot of. I mean, their overall home record wasn't where it was the last few years. They had a lot of overtime losses or losses at home, and not a ton of losses at home. But when you look at the amount of games that went to overtime in their building, um, you know West Side once again their top their their older guys are making plays, and and uh, the, this time you need year you need your veterans to step forward, and and you know Vernon's a lot like us this year with a lot of new faces, a lot of new guys to the league, and so. You know, uh, those were their first two playoff games. They didn't have a first round, uh, uh, you know, to play through and, and sort of get out the kinks. And, and so it doesn't really surprise me that it's a 1 1 series. Just another note there uh, they have alternated starts for Hallcrow and Voth since uh, the arrival of Hallcrow at the end of December. Do you see that being an issue or, or an advantage for them? Uh, you know what? I'm not in their locker room, so I really don't know what the yeah. mentality is with, with their goaltenders. But. Uh, you know, a lot of people get in the mindset that you need to have one guy this time of year. And, um, you know, it seemed like we were having issues here when we were alternating a lot. And then once Joel kind of stole, you know, grabbed onto it, uh, he, you know, some guys are rhythm goaltenders and they kind of, you know, need to play more. And um, so I really don't know, you know, the ins and outs of what's going on in their locker room, but uh, it'll be interesting what they do next. Uh, you're pretty familiar with a guy that's making waves out on the coast, uh, Dustin Johnson, back with Victoria after heading down to Nelson, and he and the Grizzlies uh, tied up going home. I think you'd have to call that a, a, a bit of a surprise, as good as Powell River was at home and as good as they were in almost every statistical category this year. Yeah, you know, I, I haven't really followed those first two games. I mean, it sounded like last night there was a bit of a, you know, we obviously had a controversial play in our first game, and it's... I was uh, still in my office last night when the uh, when Murray uh, Maxwell was listening to the the uh, the overtime on his computer, and it sounded like there was a missed icing call that created the winning goal in overtime. And um, but yeah, that's a huge win for Victoria, especially with some of the guys that they've got out right now with injury. And um, and Powell River is always a tough place to to grab wins. The only other series is Surrey Langley. I, I found it funny. I was on Twitter this morning, and someone had quoted. Harvey Smeal and he said we need to be more disciplined and I thought yeah it's a Harvey Smeal team of course they need to be more disciplined yeah, they're, they're a tough funny. team I don't follow Twitter but I saw <laughs> somebody text that to me too and, and so uh, 
I, I got a little chuckle out of that too because I think they've led the the league in penalty minutes for uh, since I was 12. So uh, you know, it it uh, it, uh, it goes without saying. But you know what? That's, uh, that's it looks like all the series are knotted at one except for ours. So um, you know, it's going to be interesting the way the rest of them fold out. Games three and four run Friday and Saturday at the Sunwave Center in Salmon Arm. Seven o'clock puck drop. 6:40 pregame show on Easy Rock AM 800, myeasyrock.com, and bchl.ca. We'll take a break and return with our media panel. We've got uh, two guys from the paper here as well as some emailed questions and some from our studio audience. This is Coach's Corner at the Best Damn Sports Bar. Here's a look at the upcoming games for your Penticton Vs. Home or away, you can catch all the V's games on Easy Rock AM 800 in Penticton or online at MyEasyRock.com. Join us next Thursday at 5.30 at the Best Damn Sports Bar for the next edition of Coach's Corner, presented by Underwriters Insurance. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, brought to you by Underwriters Insurance. Our final segment of episode 19, we've got Dave Crompton as well as Emmanuel Sequeira from the papers in town, the Herald and the Western News. Uh, Dave, fire away. Yeah, Coach, uh, I know we talked uh, coming into the playoffs that you, you, know, you had quite a few APs there that could step in. I was wondering, in relate to that, is there, do, you, do you see any lineup changes uh, going into this or just line changes even or any kind of tweaks that way personnel-wise? Well, I mean... That was the thing that we were discussing after the game last night. And then when you look at it, I mean, to have 40-some shots a night, I mean, you take it even back to the first round of the playoffs. I mean, in, in the six playoff games, um, we've averaged 40, a little over 40 shots a game. And uh, in the last 12 games, going back, you know, six playoff and, and, and the last six regular season, we, we've only given up over 30 shots once. We've been... Uh, yeah, on average in 24 against. So, I mean, there's a lot of good things that we've been doing, and with the exception of these last two games scoring goals, you know, we've even scored, you know, we scored three power plays. So, I'm not even worried about the power play, just more about finishing around the net. And, you know, we, we you know, just made the one little tweak, put Nick Cabellas in, and, uh, you know, I think we're going to pull him back out and put Betts back in for tomorrow night. But I just don't see making a big change to bring an AP in right now is going to make a difference. I think. Uh, you know, I really wasn't disappointed with any of the guys play. I mean, we may, you know, you're going to make a couple, this is junior hockey, you're going to make a couple mistakes in a game. And unfortunately, uh, if we made three in a game, they seem to have scored two. And and uh, if we get 15, you know, grade A chances in a game, if you get 10 grade A's in a game, that's like unbelievable. And we had 17 in game one, and I think somewhere around 15 or something last night. And uh, that's uh, not even counting a couple of the pipes that, that were hit. And, you know, there used to be a time in hockey, NHL, junior, or whatever, you're down 2 nothing, lose two home games, you're dead in the water. But it seems the last few years, we've seen it a lot in the NHL. Even. Is that kind of, is that heartening a little to see that, you know, you can come back now after losing two at home? Yeah, and, and like I said earlier, I mean, our team is built much differently. We're not top heavy, so it's not that, uh, you know, going there and all of a sudden we're going to have a big shutdown line taking one of our, you know, our top line away or anything like that. You know, but the reality is this. I mean, our guys aren't stupid, so there's no no point hiding from them. We know we, we need to win tomorrow night. Uh, if we go in there and do that, then I, I strongly believe the pressure switches from our shoulders to theirs, and um, and that's you know, the only thing we can focus on right now. I know. Uh, I guess, is it going to be possible for the team to come back, considering the way Simon Arm has been playing and the goal time that they've been getting? Well, I, I think that uh, if we if we get another 40 shots and hold them to 20 something, I, I don't think there's a lot of people in this room that would bet against us. I, I don't think so. You know, if 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 that kid can go out and, and make 40 saves three nights in a row, then you know I guess uh, we got to tip our hat to him and, and give him credit. But uh, you know, I, I, the, the biggest thing for us is that we can't get discouraged and, and change from what we're doing, and we can't drop from the level that we're playing at. Because I I think uh, I think we've you know, outplayed them in a lot of different areas of the game, and, and but at the same time, I don't want to come across like we don't think that they're getting anything accomplished because they're two they're two up, and and uh, you got to give them all the credit for finding ways to get wins on the road. Are there any guys that uh, you want to see step up that haven't? You know, your veterans need to find a way to score goals this time of year for you. I mean, we had 20 year olds that missed open opportunities and. And, uh, you know, guys that have been on our team for two or three years that, you know, uh, 
you know, it, we need them to score goals this time of year. And it's not that I'm disappointed in them, or, or uh, it's just a fact. I mean, you know, when you've when you've been on with a team for a while and been in the league for a while, expectations are that uh, you, you know, especially when you lose a kid like Mark McMillan. I mean. You know, you take Hammond out of their lineup right now, I mean, it's a drastic different situation. Well, we lose Mark, you haven't seen her to sit here crying about it, but what it means is those other guys that that have been on the team for two or three years need to find a way to uh, lift us through. And I guarantee if we win tomorrow night, you'll see that some of those guys will be on the score sheet if we win tomorrow night. We've got an email question in from uh, Matt, our weekly emailer. Uh, he says, Coach, what is the status of Mark McMillan's health and when will he return? Is that an easy question to answer? Well, the status is that he won't be back for this series regardless how long it goes. Um, my my thoughts are that he'll probably be done. You know, if we're fortunate enough to get through this series, I don't think he'll be back anytime soon, even for the next series. Um, so we've just taken the approach that he's done for the year. and. Uh, you know, hopefully for our sake, it's uh, longer than the next few days and, and that, uh, you know, that we keep pushing through here. But uh, unfortunately for him, unfortunately for us, when you lose a player of his caliber, I mean, the whole reason we went out to get him was for this time of year. And, you know, the biggest thing, you know, you, you, you don't just talk about the goals, you know, the, the, the points that he puts up, but he, he was 63% on, on face-offs for the year, uh, was all in our top pairing for penalty killing. So it's been a huge blow. And that's why I said a minute ago that we need other guys to, you know, take his place. Uh, John, who's here in the audience, has a question. He says, do you think about changing your defensive strategy or were you happy with the way you defended against Seminar? Yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, you, they're supposed to be a high-octane team. We held them to 22 and 24. And, and uh, more importantly, they're great A opportunities. And uh, the first night, I think they had five. And last night was right around the same. I mean, it's, it's just... Uh, I don't think there's much more we can do, and, and you know, like they get the uh, the penalty shot goal, and and then the uh, you know the, you talk about puck luck. I mean, their guy comes out of the penalty box, and right there's the puck right to him for a two on one. And so defensively, I thought we've done good. The two power play goals they scored were, you know, one was off a line change, and and uh, and the, you know the other one wasn't off a set play either. I thought we did a real good job on on that. So I thought our defensive game has been real good. All right, if you've got a question for the coach for next week's program, you can send it to vsvoice at gmail.com. Next show happens to be our 20th and final episode of Coach's Corner. It will be next Thursday, March 17th, which would be the day after a hypothetical Game 7. Could be interesting conversation. The theoretical Game 1 of the third round would start the next day. Let's hope we have lots to talk about, Coach. Thanks for your time, as always. Thank you. This has been the Coach's Corner from the Best Damn Sports Bar on Martin Street, brought to you by Underwriters Insurance. Coach's Corner is a presentation of Rye Pit Media and the Penticton V's Hockey Club.